So the Instagram competitor is live, which is deployed yesterday, and I think it's working well. I was just checking the performance. Everything looks cool. Hey, Naveen, I just read a review on Play Store. Yeah, it looks good, right? No, it doesn't. A user just mentioned that he is facing an issue with uploading his video. Yeah, it's working well for me. I uploaded the video in the morning itself. Yeah, but the review also specifically mentioned that a pop-up video displayed on their screen, and I quote, the video duration is more than the limit. So what's the limit? I think they know it is 90 seconds because we also give them the pop-up. The video should be maximum of 90 seconds. Yes, you're right about that. And also videos less than 90 seconds are running flawlessly. However, when the video's length is exact 90 seconds, then they are unable to upload it. Oh, I think we forgot to test the edge cases. So now issue, I will write the functional test from start to end again. Uh, because as a developer, my main aim was to make the product work. Uh, I will do the testing part and we'll get the functional test ready and then we'll deploy again. Okay, it's been 15 days now. The app is running awesome. Uh, we have made sure that we have done all the testing part and now it's live. Let's see how it works now. Hey, do you know Dwayne Johnson went live on our app today? Oh. Yeah, but there was a minute problem. Actually, who am I kidding? It was a major problem. Everything was running fine. And the moment 100 users joined his live, the app got crashed. Oh, in fact, yesterday Navin Reddy went live and there were 95 people. Everything went well. Yeah, then I guess more than 100 users are unable to join. Okay, I think what we are missing here is the scalability of the system. So basically as a developer, I was thinking about the app should work and now after facing the functional problem, we have done the functional testing. What we forgot to do is to design the application in such a way that it should be stable and scalable. And now let's redeploy it. Don't worry, it will be done. Okay, so our application is scalable as well. Yesterday, a lot of people went live, a lot of celebrities went live, and now we are giving a strong competition to Instagram. Uh, that's great. And I think a lot of people will join this platform soon. And in future, most of the users or most of the celebrities will be on our platform. Hey, Naveen, I just got the mail that our app has been hacked and all the users' privacy has been compromised. Oh. In fact, as a developer, I was focusing more on development and testing and scalability. I think we do have a team for the security part. Oh, but there's one thing. As a developer, it is our job to start the testing of the application. In fact, writing a secure application is important and that should be starting from the developer's end. Okay, no issue. Uh, let me just rewrite the entire application, which will take five to six months now and tell all the celebrities to wait for six months now. Let's rewrite the entire application. Oh no. Okay, so what we miss here is to test the application in the security aspect. So we have done the application building, we have done with the functional test, we have done with the scalability part, and now what we have missed is the API testing. When you build an application, there are a lot of different tests you have to do. But one thing which matters is APIs. Because see, nowadays, whenever you build an application, you write a lot of APIs, right? And that's the heart of the application because that's how users interact with your application. And if there's something wrong with the API or the way people access the API, you are at risk. So you have to also make sure that you test your APIs for the security. But how will you do that? Do we have to write the entire code? I have promised my product owner that I will give them in six months. But does it really take that much of time? Yes, if you want to do everything by yourself, it will take time. And that's where we need help here. So now we know the importance of security for developers. Of course, we do have a team of security who will be doing the testing of the product based on the security terms, right? So there are certain parameters which they check, but the security of the application should start from the developer's end. Of course, they'll do the testing later, but as a developer, how will you secure it? Especially when it comes to API, and that's where we need help. And that's where the Pint comes into picture. Now, Pint provides you a API security autopilot. If you can see the homepage, it says API security autopilot. And basically it's an awesome tool to use. The thing is, as a developer, if you want to learn about security, you have to spend a lot of time. And I would suggest you to actually understand how an application can get hacked. In fact, I have made two videos on it. One, uh, the security flaws and some solutions. But then as a developer, the API testing 
So it starts from your end. Now, as a developer, when you build an application, we have we also write the functional test, right? Because you have to make sure that your product works the way it should. So what if the security test of your API can be done from your functional test itself? And that's why if you can see that the home page itself says, when you build an application, your target application, you write functional test and with the same functional test, your pint will do the security test for you. How exactly it works? Now, of course, we'll do a demo here, but to run this demo, you need two things. In fact, we can simply uh, make sure that you have the account on pint. Uh, you can just click here to start with. And the amazing thing is, when you write APIs, of course, you need a client to test your APIs, right? Is it working properly or not? Basically, for that, we use Postman. And you can use Pint in the Postman. Of course, Pint can be used on CLI. If you are building an application with the help of CI, CD, it can also be implemented there. But just for the example, we'll see how to we integrate that with Postman, which is very easy to use. And most of the developers knows about Postman. So you don't have to learn extra thing to test Pint. Okay, so what I will do is I will click on Run in Postman for free. The only thing is you need an account. You need account on Postman, you need account on Pint and which is free. So you can simply sign up. So I will just sign up with my Google account or GitHub account, your choice. So you can see the sign up part is done. Okay, so this is the page you will get after sign up. It says uh, you have to fork Pint to your workspace to start testing your APIs for security. Okay, we'll do that. It is asking for my Postman API key. Of course, if you want to test some API, it can be your own API, which you have built your own API collection, or the Pint will give you a test collection to try out, to understand what security issues are and how to resolve them, okay? So first of all, you need an API here. And for that, you need to go to Postman. So I'm here on the Postman website. What I will do is I will just do the sign up. So first you have to do the sign up. And if you have an account, you can simply say sign in. I will again use my Google account here. So basically the sign up has been done on the Pint and Postman and now we have to connect them. So basically if you can see, I have uh, tried this Pint testing before the video so that I will know everything is working. But what you can do is you will not have this option here. The first thing you need here is if you can see we have a Pint here. In fact, let's talk about Postman. If you see workspace, uh, I do have a workspace here which is Pint testing or my workspace. What I will do is let me just create a workspace where we'll have a separate collection. Let me create a workspace and I will say this is the Pint demo workspace and you can write something which is let's say demo. And I want to do this with, uh, do form a personal use. I will say personal and click on create workspace. Now once your workspace is ready, you can see it will be available here. Everything is empty at this point. Uh, but if I go back to Pint, it is asking me for two things. In fact, three things. The first thing it is asking me for an API. This is where you connect your Pint with Postman. And the way you can do that is by getting the API key. So to, the way you do that is by going to your accounts. You can see there's a manage account option and click on settings. On the left hand side, you can see there's an option of API keys. In fact, I created some API keys just for testing. Uh, I hope you will not see the entire key. In fact, I will delete all the keys after this video. But we want to do is we want to create a key here. So I will say generate API key and you can name anything, anything here. I will say my key, you can give any name, doesn't matter. It should be logical and click on generate API key. Now the only thing is you will see this key only once. So just copy this and you can save it somewhere. Okay, so I do have saved it in my sublime. You can see it here. Okay, that's my, I, I got my API key, right? Now, once you got your API key, go back to Pint. Now, how do you connect your Postman to Pint? It's very simple. Just enter the API key, say submit. Now, this is getting connected. The Pint and Postman got connected. And if you scroll down, you can see we got our workspace, a newly created workspace, which is Pint demo. Click on that. And that's it. You are connected your Postman and Pint. You can see it says your collection. Uh, you can have your own collection or maybe you can go with the testing collection here, which is good. Click on next. Okay, now if you want this to work, so there are some certain things you need in your machine. First, you need Docker, and you can see in my machine, I do have Docker installed. So which is the Docker desktop on Mac. For Windows also, you can install Docker desktop. For Linux, you have to install Docker with the commands. And it's easy, right? We developers, we know how to install Docker. And make sure that your Docker is running, something like this, some window. And yeah, so Docker is running. You also need Python. So let me just verify, do I have Python in my machine? So I will say terminal, expand, and I will test Python 
version. Okay, I don't have Python, but do I do have Python 3. The only thing is I forgot to do allies and you can see I do have Python 3 here. So I do have this version. And anyway, between the version 7 to 11, there's no much change or 7 to uh, 3, 10, I guess. So this works. If you have this version, it was working for me. So you can use this version or any upgraded version that works. Now, once you have Python and Docker installed, and also we need Postman. So in my machine, I already have Postman installed. So you can see I do have Postman here. And you have to also make sure that you're logging from here. So click on sign in with the same account. So we got Postman. So basically, what are things you need? First, you need a Docker, you need Python, and you need Postman. And in the browser, you have to make sure that you're logging in Pint and also Postman. And nowhere we have to pay anything, everything, every, all the tools here are free. So you can see the recently created workspace is Pine Demo. If I click on that, uh, you can see we got the collection here. So I'm into collection tab and I can see in Pint, I have all this collection. Now this is basically everything is scripted to test your application with the functional test which you have created, okay? And you don't have to learn everything, how the security works, just run this and it will show you everything. But how this will work? If you directly try to run this code from the Postman or if you try to run this script, it will not work because the Docker is there, but the containers for testing this, the Pint container is not running. Because if I see, if I open my Docker, the Pint container is not running. In fact, no containers are running here. How do we do that? It's very simple. If you go back to your steps here, you know, the Pint onboarding step, you just need to do these two things. Uh, you have to copy this. You have to install this, right? The Pint client. Let me open the terminal and I will say paste. The only thing is in my machine, I have Python 3, right? And I've not done the allies. So if you try this command, it may, not, it may not work on your machine. So if this is not working, try PIP3, then it will work. You can see it is downloading the Pint CLI, it's done. Okay, so once we got Pint installed, I will simply say Pint and you can see it's there in my machine now. And now once we got Pint, the next step is you need to open the Postman because that's what will load Docker. So I will say Pint Postman, the same step which is available here. Just enter that and click on enter. So it will load the Docker first. It will download the Docker images and it will make it run. So it says pulling the latest Docker. It will take some time because the images are a bit heavy. So I will also open my Docker just to see if, if things are happening. So you can see the Docker is up and running now with this port number. Remember the port number is 5001 and that's the image it is running. So if I go back, it says server is up and running. Now, so when server is up and running, you can literally run this script. So let me just go back to my postman. Okay, and the way you can do that, you can see we have a Pine script here. And if you say, click on these three dots, there's an option of run collection. Now, when you click that, you can see this will run all this uh, script here, all these requests. Click on run Pint. And here we go. So it's, it will first check if the Postman is running from the desktop application, check for the Pine Docker is up, which is up, so it will work. First, it is doing all the housekeeping stuff to test your application. And now it is running the automated script tests. Okay, that's done. You can see everything is done. It is tested and you can see it is so fast. Normally as a developer, when you want to test the API for all the security bugs, it will take a lot of time. So what I will do is if I want to see the report, it's very simple. You can just click on show report here and uh, you have to send the request to get the report. Okay, you got the report now. And if you want to, of course you can see that in the HTML format, but if you want to visualize it, click on visualize. Let me just make it a bit big, bigger so you can see it properly. So in total, you got five errors. This is, you have to solve this. There's one warning and there are 22 tests which have passed, okay. And uh, so basically we have three endpoints here, which we have test the login account and transaction. So we have not written our own uh, API collection here. So Pint will give you a GOAT API to test or GOAT collection to test. And they have these three endpoints, login, account and transaction. And for login, there is one error for account. There are two and transaction there are two. But what exactly these errors are, if you scroll down, uh, you can see it, 
it is mentioning all the headers. The first one is user data leakage to the other users. Now, this is the same problem which we faced in our application. Of course, the dummy application which we, we which we're talking about. Okay, we don't have any Instagram competitor, don't worry. So basically, this is the problem which we faced, the data leakage. People were able to log into other accounts or they were able to access the other accounts. So that's one problem. So you have to make sure that you secure that. So there are multiple problems here. Uh, in post, there's a problem of stack trace. So when you read this, you understand, okay, uh, we have to solve this problem. So of course, Pint is not fixing your problems. Pint is showing your problems. As a developer, you need to fix it, right? You know, okay, this is a problem, let's solve this, right? And uh, so there are multiple problems. There's also one warning which you can see. And of course, it also talks about good things in your application. It checks if there's a SQL injection, if there is a no SQL injection, if there's a command injection, and a lot of different uh, parameters. And by looking at this, now you know, okay, what can go wrong and what, how do we solve this? Okay, that's, that's the thing we have here. In fact, uh, if you have your own application to test, you can also do that by setting the variables. So if you click on this particular collection, if you go to variables, and if you have your own collection, you can set these variables, which is mentioned here. So you can set the port numbers, you can set your own API key for the postman and your collection ID. Once you set that, you can test your own application, right? So all this thing we got because we were using a Goat collection, which is already there. But yeah, if you are using your own collection, then you have to set these parameters. Now, can we use Pint with only Postman? No, we can use Pint with different things as well. Uh, example, let's say if I go back to their docs, which is amazing. Uh, so you can also go to their docs. In fact, they also have a video, tutorial video, which you can watch and follow. Uh, prerequisite, we have talked about this. We need Python, we need Docker. And so basically you can use Pint with Postman, which we have done. Uh, you can also use the uh, new man, which is for the CLI. And you can also do it with CI CD. So whatever pipeline you have, you can include Pint there. And how do we do that? Do you have documentation available? And let me know if you found an easy way to implement Pint on CI CD. Of course, docs are there, but uh, let me know in the comments if you have done your own way. There's also the Pint command, which is an experimental feature. So you can try this out as well. So let's go, go back to homepage. Now, apart from docs, you can see we also have our amazing community for Pint, which is a Slack community, which you can join. Next, they have a lot of different blogs available, which you can, which you can read. In fact, uh, Offer writes an amazing blogs and I was reading the blogs, which is amazing, uh, which is fun to learn actually. And then we have badges as well. Now, since I'm an influencer on an ambassador for Pint, I got this badge. If you want to get badges, you can also do that. You can follow the steps and you can get the badge and you can showcase your skill set on LinkedIn or any platform you want. So yeah, uh, get this badge and be a security expert. But again, developer, we need to also focus on security, not just building an application. So that's it from this video where we talked about how do we secure application and think about security from start, not at the end. So you will find all the links for the find and for the badges in the description, check them out. And uh, see you in the next video, everyone. Bye-bye.